So we're going to plug this in. I uh, have built a device I call the remote detonator. And it is an outlet that's connected to a cord to a handheld uh, detonator. And there's a start and stop. That's to turn the power on and off. Now this switch here um, disables or disconnects the uh, neutral and um, line, the neutral and hot. So there's actually two separate switches and uh, it disconnects both of them. And it plugs into uh, my power over here. When it's on, it uses about one watt. That's because this uh, is a, a ground fault interrupter and there's some circuitry in there. There's no, there's no exact reason why I used a ground fault interrupter. It's just what I had laying around um, that had wires that came out the back instead of the sides because I wanted to be able to hold it like this when I'm, when I'm using it sometimes. That doesn't make sense. But uh, <laughs> So there's my detonator. So we can plug in a device. Actually, I should probably test this thing first. Um, what do I have? Something that uses a lot of juice. Uh, we can try the television thingy. That it off. It's off. Okay. And like that. You know. Hundred and forty watts. Okay, it's working. And there we go, color bars. So I can sit all the way back here. And uh power up a device from from uh, a good distance. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right. All right. Make sure this is on. Eighty two watts, fifty watts, fifty four. Seventy seventy six watts, seventy seven, sitting around seventy seven watts. I don't see a beam though. Oh, Oh, 
low pass, high pass, I triple E, flat. Oh, the backlight lights up too. The uh, scale illuminator. It's got tubes in it too. Wow. See them? Tubes. I have no idea what I'm looking at yet. Looks like a square wave. This is waveform monitor, all the connectors are in the back. Let's take the cover off. So here's the inside of it. It has a Tektronix tube. I think I think it's made by Tektronix actually. And a lot of transistors. Uh, how many tubes? Six tubes? And then a few more right there. Those are, I think, rectifiers. I heard a relay click. That was my finger. And in this section here, there should be like 15,000 volts. Look at the isolation on that. That's, that's pretty cool. Goes all the way back into here. Why is it still plugged in? It's not plugged in if you looked at the cord. Is that a roll of solder? <laughs> what is that? Um, it looks like a roll of solder. <laughs> what does it say? No, it doesn't say. Oh, it is solder. It is desirable that only silver bearing solder be used on this on the ceramic terminals and for tinning the iron ordinary tin lead solder may be used but repeated use will break the solder to ceramic bond so yeah it's a spool of solder that, that for you to use when you're repairing it <laughs> I've never seen a device come with its own solder I could say the same thing, though I've never seen very many of these in in, in the real world. I've only ha I've Ooh. only seen one, and it's the one that I own. Look at that! They got. Um, I mean, before I met him. Anyway. They got. Uh, I figure what these are called. Adapters, though, for this this kind to this kind. BNC. BNC to uh, F type F. Yes, that's an F connector. That's an F connector. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. That's like an antenna connector for parts there. Video output. Oh, it has it's video output. Again. I wonder what kind of video it outputs. I wonder if it'll cook up to that thing. It outputs video? Yeah, it says video output right here. Oh. That's what it says. Look at those uh, socketed... Are those transistors? Yeah. So it has tubes and transistors. Yeah. Oh, there's another tube right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tubes. And then, uh, then the CRT. Cool. How many watts was it using? Whoa. 
It's doing something else now. Like what? Oh, it's just the same. So it's about 80 watts once it's warmed up. Okay, so uh, this touchscreen monitor looking thing. I took the cover off and it has a couple inputs here. Maybe a networking connection. And it's made by ConMed model Surgeon's Assistant. And it's prescription only. So I'm going to hook power up to it. Um, 24 volts, I'm guessing, on that pin. And I will attach a wire somewhere for a ground. I can just uh, attach it to one of these screws into the metal chassis there. So, uh, do that now. Alright, so I have a wire going to the screw here for ground and 24 for positive. Alright, so we got 23 volts. Ready to power it up. And got a picture of some kind. It's using uh, almost an amp, 720 milliamps. Let's see what it can do here. Starting system, okay. Video. Maybe it doesn't have enough power. So the starting system, please wait. So it's booting up, I guess. Is it making any sound? Well, I can't really seem to get it to do anything. I guess I could take it apart and see if the touch screen is disconnected or non-functional. Um, but it's kind of interesting device. Surgeon's Assistant by ComMed. ConMed. Version 1.7 C00. I guess I can call their tech support line or go to their website and maybe get a PDF of their uh, user's manual. It's like the uh, screen isn't functioning. It's using uh, 740 milliamps at 24 volts. So that's about 15 watts of power. Oh, this might be the model number. The TPS4500L. So I took this apart to see what I can do with it. Added a power cord. And this is the computer that's inside of it has a 72-pin uh, SIM memory module, yeah. 32 megabytes. See what happens if I plug it in without that in there. Okay. What do I get? Still get power, but no screen. Interesting. So it needs memory to make the screen work. Put the memory module back in. And that time. Yeah, I got it in. Okay, let's try it now. Flip it over. Yeah. I'm gonna try a different sticker RAM. I'm just curious. See what it would do. I want to see what it would do with different RAM. A box of RAM. Here's a stick. Looks to be 16 megabytes. 
Let's see what it does. Take out one type, put it in another. I'm expecting it to do the same thing. But you never know. Alright. Well, it works. It works. Hmm. Put this in my memory. Nothing hurt. Nothing does anything. Hi. I got a surgeon's assistant, but I can't get it to do anything. Hey, wait, did you just get off work? Oh, yeah. So I took apart one of these display thingies. Um, the reason why I bought it was because I saw a board inside. But I don't see how this... Uh, what this was for. Anyway, the display would have been covered up somewhat. There's a little LCD display there. And I managed to get it to power on by hooking uh, those two pins up to positive and then that one pin to ground. There's a strange key-like thing here. Strange key like thing. It's made by the same company that makes those uh, sound stereo system things, the display units for um, like car, car toys would have in their display. That's the company there, MTI. I have a whole bunch of stuff from them over the years. And uh, I power it up. Best Buy ST2 EBV18. Not a touch screen. That's all it does. Probably starting it without the key in there. Same thing. Hmm. It's a mystery time bomb. I need rolly chairs in here. I could use the display for something. It's a nice little display. And here's another one, same thing, has an E on it. And, uh, yeah, the little LCD gets covered up right there. So it was never meant to be seen. Maybe just for servicing. Maybe it's the diagnostics. And these little pieces of wood here, they all, they're, were made for holding boards, apparently. And you can go through your boards like they're CDs and go, ah, yes. Is this a good one? Yeah, that's a good one. Play that. <laughs> I think you should build something like that. You know, build like an MP3 player. I am hard. working on it. I am working on it. An EEPROM MP3 player. Actually, it'll it'll play WAV files. So, uh, I was looking at this board and looking at data sheets, and I went to go peel off this label, and I went, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. 
Oh, I scored big time. That is a UV erasable Altair FPGA. Here's the data sheet for it. It was a programmable logic device, a PLD. So I, I was wrong about being FPGA, but it is a uh, PLD. And I have the uh, 7096. So 7096. So I got this one here. Usable gates. 1.8k macro cell 96 I don't know what any of this means but I'm really excited and uh, these two chips are actual FPGAs so this is a programmable gate array this one here that's a programmable gate array and then uh, these two here are um, Intel Flex Logic FPGAs with SRAM option. Uh, they're uh, you can compare it to what we have today. I have no idea <clears throat> what what they have today. Um, the five equivalent logic gates or up to ten thousand bits of SRAM. Um, I got a few devices in, coming in the mail. I, sh I should be able to uh, interface with this and program and do something with it. This is all this is all kind of new to me. Actually, getting into the the uh, programming aspect of things. You know, is it reusable? See, I don't even know if it's reusable. Flex Logic FPGA Field Programmable Gate Array. They aren't exactly uh, winners. So this is a Linksys boombox. It has a little antenna. And on the back, I hooked up the uh, speakers, I think. Only one of them. Uh, one of them requires power from the system itself. It's not a boombox. Sure looks like a boombox. It's not a boombox. It's a boombox. It's not a boombox. <laughs> it's it's a network, network setup. media player. I will have this playing cassette tapes by the end of the night. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Change to wired. Oh, it has wired? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I guess I can hook this up to an uh, Ethernet cable. What else does it do? Device name. Let me turn on my Wi-Fi. It says it's buffering. Okay. Shit, it's trying to get it from your... Pause. Oh. Do the speakers have to be powered too? That one does. That's not... <laughs> that's for wireless. No. That plugs into here. Oh, it's it's a stupid thing like that? Yeah. I... Let's find another transformer. Okay, I'll turn on power supply for the speakers. <laughs> it works! <laughs> That's so cool. It doesn't get very loud. We're just getting the signal. It's coming from Ethernet cable. Is it getting it from Internet? <sighs> yes. These buttons are not intuitive though. Okay, how about some Bossa Brazil? Brazil? How's it getting it? Where's it getting that from? The Internet. Ethernet cable. No, I mean, where's the radio? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It was just in the menu. Oh, I if that's on there or something. Oh. Play the station. 
not sure if I'm doing it right. Oh, do I only get one sample or something? <laughs> the rest you have to pay for. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm gonna try deep mix again. Play the station. Anyway, nope, that one works. What? Just got lucky. That's pretty cool. There, is that loud enough? Yeah, actually. 